Welcome back to Sous Vide Everything, guys. Today I'm gonna show you how I mastered sous vide chicken. Let me tell you. <laughs> Not just master, he made it taste damn good. <laughs> it is damn good, everybody. And we start off with a whole chicken. And one of the biggest recommendations I can give you is to get a nice sharp knife. You're definitely gonna need it because the first thing we gotta do is completely debone this chicken. And once you know how to do it, it's easy. Let me show it to you. The first thing I like to do is to remove the wings. And right here, as you can see in the middle is the joint. You should be able to cut it like nothing. If there's any type of resistance, it's because you're hitting the bone. Since we took them out, let me show you how easy it is to make some lollipops. Hold them nice and strong in each end and pop out the bone on the opposite side, pull everything back, and then just cut out the wing tip and remove the smallest bone. Pull everything back and there you have the chicken wings lollipop. That is as easy as that to make. I mean, come on, and this type of presentation is just impressive. I can almost guarantee you that most people will think that you cleaned up that bone like there was no tomorrow. But we keep the secret between you and me and how easy it is, right? But now going back to deboning the chicken. Right here in the front, you should be able to find the wishbone. To make things easier for you, you definitely want to cut them out. Just make a nice small cut like this and you will be able to fill them. There is one in each side. Usually, it's super easy to take them out. And 90% of them, they already come broken. Just pull them out just like this. Now turn the chicken on its side and slice the back. That is the only part we're going to be cutting the skin because moving on forward it is important to keep it intact. The very first obstacle you're going to have is this one right here which is the shoulders. You should be able to find the joint and once you do just cut right between them. Again there should be zero resistance. If you find it hard to do it's because you're hitting the bone. Once you've removed both shoulders it's a lot easier just to work it with your hands. Start pressing the meat down and pull the cavity in the opposite direction. As you can see it should come out nice and easily just like this. And yes, the tenderloin will definitely be attached. To remove them, it's easy, just use your fingers to take them out. Going back to our chicken, the next thing we gotta take care of is the oysters. That is located right on the thighs. Just use your knife, go around the oyster and take it out. As you can see, once you've done both sides, it comes out nice and easy. The next thing to do is to remove all of the leg bones. And for that, I started with my knife. I went all the way around and to make things easier, it's much better just to scrape it. Once you hit the joint, work your knife around it and just continue to scrape the other bone. To have a nice presentation, you definitely don't want to cut the bone completely out. It is better just to break it with the back of a knife just like this. And once you do so, you can see that the bone comes out nice and easy. For the shoulders, I use the same exact method. I started by going all the way around the bone, then just scrape the meat, and once you reach the end, pull it out just like this. The very last thing to do is to remove the silver skin from the tenderloin. And the easiest way to do that is to use some paper towel and scrape it out just like that. As you can see, once I was done, this is exactly what it looks like. 100% boneless chicken. You can't do this and once again I'll tell you, it is not a big deal. Now the next thing to do is to put it all back together. So I first started by opening everything up, putting the tenderloins right next to the thighs, then I season it well with salt, freshly ground black pepper, garlic powder and Guga's rub. The next thing to do is to add your stuffing. And let me tell you, this stuffing is fantastic. And here's how to do it. In a saute pan, I started by cooking some bacon. You want to keep it under medium heat so that you can render all of that fat. Once the bacon has cooked all the way through, remove the bacon because the next thing we gotta do is saute some mushrooms. For today, I'm using baby portobello, but you can use any mushroom you like. Cook them until they have a nice beautiful color just like this. And of course, remember to season them and for that, I use salt and freshly ground black pepper. As you can see, mine was done to perfection. That is exactly the way I like it. Using the same exact pan, I threw in a little bit of white onions. Saute them until you have a nice light color. Then throw in some ground pork and cook it all the way through. For the seasoning, I used a little bit of salt, followed by freshly ground black pepper, smoked paprika, cayenne pepper, and garlic powder. Mix it well until everything is fully combined. Now there's left to do is to throw in our bacon, followed by the baby portobello. Mix everything well and your stuffing is done. That is how easy it is to make this stuffing. But now going back to our chicken, make sure you add as much as necessary. Because remember, we removed all of the bones, so you definitely want to add as much as possible to add some structure. Now there's left to do is to close it up and tie it with butcher's twine. And once you are done tying it up, this is what it looks like. That, my friends, is how you master the good old chicken. Because I'll tell you one thing, by the time you're done cooking it, it is impressive. But now all there's left to do is to bag it up and get it ready for the water bath. But first, we all know that a chicken gravy is a must. And for today, I'm gonna show you one that you can use the juices from the bag. And here's how to do it. In a saute pan, I started by melting some butter. Once that's done, throw in a little bit of all-purpose flour and cook it all the way through. Keep stirring it and mix it until it changes color completely just like this. At the same time, pay attention to 
to your smell. Once it starts smelling like pie dough, you know it's ready. Then it's time to throw in the juices from the bag. Mix everything well and bring it to a light simmer. Now you definitely want to keep an eye on this because you will start thickening up on you real quick. To finish off our gravy, all there's left to do is to add a little bit of salt, followed by freshly ground black pepper. Mix it well and your gravy is done. That is as easy as that to make an awesome gravy using the juices from the bag. But now going back to our chicken. Talking about that, I'm going to be cooking at 145 degrees Fahrenheit for four and a half hours. That will make sure everything is cooked all the way through. And I can't wait to show you how wonderful this chicken is going to be. We got the beautiful chicken in the water bath fully cooked, which was at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of four and a half hours, everybody. That is enough time to cook the whole thing all the way through. At the same time, we are hungry, it's ready, and it's time to take it out. Let's do it. I'm gonna tell you right now, as soon as you take the chicken out of the bag, you can tell that it's gonna be something incredible because of the smell. It just hits you and it puts a big, huge smile on your face, everybody. Now here, please, you've seen me use it. There's many applications for the juices of the bag. Never throw this away. Oh, the smell that comes out of this thing is fantastic. Now here's the deal. For the chicken, the searing, I'm gonna be using my oven, all right? My oven has a convection setting which basically circulates hot air throughout the whole uh, oven. As you cook in sous vide, there is some type of juice pockets underneath the skin. That is important to be removed. If not, your skin is not gonna get crispy. The best way for me to do that is just poke it with my knife and the juices comes all out and you are able to achieve a nice crispy skin. So with all that being said, I know, my chicken doesn't look that good right now, but watch this. All right, everybody, here we have our beautiful chicken. What do you think, Andrew, huh? Looks interesting. Looks very interesting, right? So this yeah. one, there's a little bit of stuffing inside, and the, this is all about the preparation, right? The preparation and wow factor, yeah? Looks pretty okay. interesting. Even though the presentation is amazing and everything, nothing really matters if it doesn't taste good. Yeah, it tastes good, huh? Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Ooh, that is tender. It's moist, it's, well, I shouldn't say moist, I should say it's juicy. <laughs> Try the skin. I don't know if you got the, the piece by itself on the skin. It is nice and crispy, and that's the secret of the skin, everybody. Put it in the oven and let it do its thing, and make sure that you always spoke, and if there's any water pockets, let the water come out. That way you get nice, crispy skin, just like this. Tell, tell me if the skin is crispy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> gravy time. I know you like gravy. Gravy time. I like gravy. Let's go for the gravy. With the gravy, everybody smells so buttery. <laughs> you ready for it? Yeah, let's go. With the gravy. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh mm. boy. It's like the icing on the cake. <laughs> yes, I agree. I'm even gonna get some more. If you could just make this. Mm a bit more often. That I can't be believe you're asking me to make more chicken. Well, yeah, you know, when I'm on here, you know, they actually, they comment, mm. they say it. They say, how does Angel stay skinny with all that food? <laughs> how? A lot of exercise. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's also a lot of chicken when I'm not here. Exactly, so, we eat a lot of chicken. Woo. Anyway, guys, these are the results. This is absolutely fantastic. I hope you give it a try. Make your chicken a little bit more exciting. I know it looks like it's a lot of work, but trust me, it is not. Once you do it once or twice, 
you become an expert at it. You can literally debone the chicken in 60 seconds. I'm telling you, I know it looks difficult, but it's really not. You just gotta do it more often and you'll be a master at it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in any of the equipment I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. The bacon and the... The, the pork. Pork. Big time. I agree. And the gravy. Combination together. It is amazing, everybody. Give it a try. We'll see you on the next one. That's, Take care, everybody. That's big time, bro. I agree.